much, dear friends and enemies of tango. <laughs> Welcome uh, tonight to this evening. Uh, actually, we want to travel together with you to Buenos Aires, of course, the place where tango was origin, but to a very specific moment. We want to travel to the 60s. But we already have a very bad news to share because tango was dying. And, um, but we, we are not going to desperate because like a messiah, there is like this guy who's going to save tango. I'm talking, of course, about the great Astro Piazzolla. Um, but that's at least what the official stories tell us. Because actually in 2015, when we started this project, we asked ourselves, um, was Piazzolla the only person who was able to save tango? There were other interesting figures to discover. And to our surprise, we discovered uh, that there was someone else, also an Argentinian bandonian and composer called Eduardo Rovira. Eduardo Rovira still doesn't get the recognition that he deserved, but tonight we want to introduce you his, uh, his talented and his, uh, his music. Um, and um, although that in the 60s they tried to confront Astro Piazzolla and Eduardo Rovira, tonight we are going without confrontations to try to introduce both composers and to expect that you can rediscover uh, modern tango in a different way. Piazzolla and Rovira, they played together only one time in 1966, and we are going tonight to reconstruct that evening for you. So without um, more introductions, I have my notes here. Um, this is La Noche del Encuentro, and we are Sonico. Thank you. 
We just play uh, three pieces. Uh, the first one, Amarambio Catan, an original composition from uh, Eduardo Rovira, as well as Nanin, also original. And the last piece that we play, it's an arrangement, a very, very famous tango called El Choclo. But maybe you recognize it, maybe not. It's not your fault. It's just <laughs> Rovira's fault and his creativity. Um, we will continue with something very, very uh, important at this very moment. We are going to continue with football. Because the next piece, it's called Tango para el Profe. Uh, wait. Professor Kistenmacher, that's the name of the person who's dedicated this piece from Eduardo Rovira. He was a coach from Estudiantes de la Plata, which is uh, one of the main uh, football teams in Argentina. And it was a uh, world champion in 1966, I recall. I don't know, I think 68. <laughs> no, 68, 68, yeah. Um, yeah. We went on tour to Argentina a couple of months ago and we got corrected during the, during, <laughs> during the concert. Yeah, anyhow. So um, I'm going to ask you to use your imagination because in the next piece, you can maybe see the teams coming to the field, maybe the people supporting for it, maybe a full, maybe an offside, and why not, maybe a goal from your team. <laughs> so. Tango para el profe from Eduardo Robi.
search for new ways of expression, which was what we are here for, or attempting for to revolutionize language, also have uh, the intention to attract new audience. New audience is not necessarily familiar with Tamil music. So uh, Astor Piazzolla and Rugira both turn towards smaller formations. Uh, uh, Piazzolla started instead of quintet, and Rugira started a trio. A trio <coughs> set up of double bass, bandoneon, and electric guitar. Uh, in 1966, this trio released their first EP, uh, titled A Roberto Aru, and it was actually uh, four pieces were on the EP, and they were a tribute, all original compositions by Eduardo Rugira as a tribute to the, to the literature of Buenos Aires. They were, each piece was dedicated to a famous writer from a different year. And uh, we will play for you two of these four pieces. You will hear first Alois Lucci, famous poet and writer, and after that, Astro Beto. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, for the next piece that we are going to play for you, we are going to ask you once more to use your imagination. Actually, it's a kind of a sad story because um, Rovira, the last uh, part of, of his life, he decided to go to live to this city I mentioned before called La Plata, 50 kilometers from Buenos Aires. La Plata, uh, it's near to a river and uh, it's a city that uh, normally gets uh, inundations, get the floods, uh, and uh, in 2013 one, uh, was one of the last years where a lot of people uh, died and also uh, a lot of the music of Rovira was lost with the flood, with the water. So, um, I'm going to invite you to try to think that you are sleeping and all of a sudden you discover that the water is getting in, in your house and you try to take your dear ones, some of the things that you love, and you start to look for uh, help from your neighbors, and you come in as an unexpected guest. The name of the next, next piece is called Al Invitado. Uh, thank you very much. We've arrived at the second part of our concert for you tonight, 
and where we will play a lot of the music of Af and his quintet of tango Evo. Um, so we will travel to Buenos Aires, but we will make a short stopover in New York. Because New York has, uh, is a city, of course, uh, where Astor spent quite a lot of his life at different times. Um, in the 1920s, the heyday of the, uh, what, the prohibition, uh, the family uh, moved to New York City. And they uh, found a house in Manhattan close to Little Italy, where Piazzolla's father, known as Nonino, uh, he worked as a barber. Uh, some of his customers were mafia people. And uh, in his spare time, he owned a motorbike with a sidecar. And in his spare time, Piazzolla's father would help the mafia, where he would smuggle alcohol, uh, which would be hidden under the skirt, so he would drive the motorbike and uh, Piatola's mom would be sitting in the sidecar hiding the alcohol under the shirt. Um, so uh, Piatola, growing up in uh, Little Italy, of course, a lot of his childhood friends were, some of them were children of mafia people. And so Piatola was part of a street gang, and he, at an early age already, learned to defend himself with his fists, which he, this kind of quite uh, explosive, let's call it, uh, part of his character he kind of retained for the rest of his life. The next piece we will play for you is a uh, composition by Astor Piazzolla uh, as a tribute to his life and times in New York City. It's called La Calle 92, 92nd Street. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, um, I'm not giving it back now. Uh, no. Um, well, when uh, looking at the lives of great artists like Miles Davis, but in our case, tonight, of course, of Astor Piazzolla, it's interesting to notice that their path isn't always uh, success, or they only know success. They know a lot of disappointments and failures along the way. Um, for Piazzolla, in the 1950s, he had already been playing for more than 10 years with one of the most important and biggest traditional tango orchestras in uh, Buenos Aires, the orchestra of Nibal And um, Piazzolla got bored with the repetitive uh, figures of and, and fragments of traditional tango, and he wanted to change things. And uh, he actually, originally, wanted to be a classical composer. And he won a scholarship in Buenos Aires, which uh, paid for him to go and study in Paris with the famous Nadia Boulanger. Nadia wasn't convinced that uh, Piazzolla's destiny was a classical career. So she convinced him to return to Buenos Aires and revolutionize tango. Piazzolla returned to Buenos Aires and founded the famous Octeto Buenos Aires, which was an artistic success but economically, it was a total disaster. So that was failure number one. Uh, so he moved back to New York, to the famous 92nd Street, to try another Latin-inspired project that also didn't work. And then he returned to Buenos Aires and founded his now famous first quintet. We will now play for you from this first quintet. First, Revirado, and then Lo que vendrá. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. That really warms our hearts. Um, we have one, one last one for you guys. Uh, one very last one. A Piazzolla tune. Actually, once um, Piazzolla started with his, his famous quintet in the 60s, um, he stopped playing other people's music. He only played during concerts and on most of his records, he only played his own compositions, which is, in a sense, understandable, of course. But he made one little exception, and we have that one for you tonight. Actually, the final piece of every concert, but only then, as an encore, he would play an arrangement of a traditional tango that he made, and that tango is Chique. We will play that for you now. Thanks. Thanks. 